everybody we have a uh, contest type problem here and um, I like this notation membership but this really means the same thing is X is any real number trapped between uh, 7 and 24 okay that's literally the meaning of this member I like the membership I like it it's terse and just a little bit nicer but it means exactly this okay now the question is how many solutions are there to this floor times ceiling of x equals x squared equation. Now just a brief review on that. I'm not going to go through all the definitions and everything. But if you have the floor of say 3.7, okay, that you that some people call that the greatest integer function, which is confusing all by itself, you know, caused tons of confusion over the years. But this is equal to 3. Again, and that's the greatest integer less than the input argument, okay? The input argument is 3.7, so 3 is the greatest integer less than the input argument here. Now, similarly, the, the ceiling of 3.7, okay, is equal to 4, and I don't, however you want to say that, okay? But that's the least integer I guess that is greater than this okay so again floor ceiling all right now uh, I just I broke it up here into two separate situations it's all integers there's if we just consider the input X being an integer where well, there's 18 integers in this interval 7 to 24 and again some people will say 24 minus 7 is 17 but it's always one more because you have to count both endpoints. So it's really 24 minus 7 plus 1. So there's 18 integers. And the floor and the ceiling of an integer are always just the integer. The nice thing about floor and ceiling functions is it always returns an integer unconditionally. All right. And so this is fairly trivial right here. The floor of i times the ceiling of i is just i times i, but that's i squared. So, so far we have 18 solutions based on just the integers that are contained in this interval. So there's 18 solutions so far. Okay, now let's go down to the slightly more challenging case of where x is not an integer. Notice how I did it. I broke this interval up into, uh, what is that, 17 subintervals, okay? And it's a, it's a real number between these numbers, so it's, it's a real number that's not an integer, right? This, this, this means uh, i is less, strictly less, <clears throat> excuse me, i is strictly less than x, Strictly less than i plus 1 is what the parentheses mean in this context, okay? So again, x would be a real number that is not an integer, okay? And it's clear that the floor of any real number in this interval is greater than 1 but less than x plus 1. So that means its floor would be i, and in a similar fashion, its ceiling would be uh, x plus i, okay? Now, we kind of already solved the problem with that even, you know, since there's 17 of these intervals here from 7 to 23 is 17. All right, really, I, you could almost say we're done right now. There would be 35 total solutions. But if you want to see this a little bit further, um, this would be the same thing as the square root of, uh, and it's positive. We don't need to do the minus here. Okay, uh, so it's i times i plus 1. These would be the exact solutions here if you wanted to go check them. Remember, we're just trying to count the total number of solutions. All right, so that's equal to x. And notice, in this case, there's no need to take the negative square root, okay? I don't think, I don't, I, don't, I guess, uh, yeah, because we're starting out in, in, in an interval full of positive numbers, right? Okay, so, uh, but anyway, uh, really, this step here is almost superfluous, all right? So what we have here is 18 solutions when uh, x is a real number that is an integer, and we have 17 solutions when x is a real number that's not an integer. And those two disjoint conditions combine to give the total number of solutions to be 18 plus 17. So the total number of solutions is 18 plus 17. What does that add up to? 35. So that's equal to 35, whoops, 35 uh, solutions. All right, kind of a fun little contest problem. Not super challenging. You just have to know the definition of floor and ceiling functions. And there's a little bit of reasoning going on here. And breaking it up into a disjoint circumstance where you deal with all the integers, one of the cases, you know, think of this case one. 
and then deal with all the non-integers. So this this is case one down here. This since we're trapping it between i and i plus one exclusive, that would make it a, a real number that is not an integer. And so we have case two, and those two cases exhaust all the possibilities. We got 18 in one case, 17 in the other case. So we have 35 total solutions. Thanks for viewing.